Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome into another episode of the Mind Your Business podcast series presented to you each week. Thanks to our partners at Appalachian Commercial Real Estate and UNC Health Appalachian. I'm David Jackson, President and CEO of the Boone Area Chamber of Commerce. We thank you for joining us for the program once again. And uh, this has been a busy period of time here in our high country economy. You know, we've, we've transitioned from leaf season through choose and cut season. And now that the weather has cooperated with us, we are fully into winter sports season and really getting an opportunity to understand on an annual basis, just what cold weather and snow on the slopes means for the entire high country economy. Uh, earlier this week, the North Carolina Ski Areas Association hosted a press conference where they released fresh data as part of their 2022-23 uh, economic value analysis. And it's a, a study that's done every couple of years that helps kind of set the expectation and understanding for what the winter sports economy looks like in our neck of the woods and also kind of give us some benchmarks to go back and look at performance. So we're going to get into some of those numbers with a longtime friend of the program, uh, Kim Yokel from Sugar Mountain, serves as the president of the North Carolina Ski Areas Association, uh, in addition to her roles at, at Sugar, which I'm sure we'll talk about here in a few minutes. So Kim, first of all, welcome back to the program. It's It's been a little while, but always great to talk to you. Yeah, thank you, David. I really appreciate being on, and I certainly love to always talk about snow sports in the North Carolina high country. Well, let's set the the kind of the groundwork for this. Um, it, it's always important for businesses, no matter how large or small the industry may be, to have good data to to track performance. So, what was it that that got the North Carolina Ski Areas Association down the road of of tracking some of this, as you call it? economic value and and what have you learned as an industry over the years that that you have been um, you know, looking at and, and digesting the numbers in in these kinds of reports? Well, the North Carolina Ski Association was founded in the uh, late 70s. So before my time, uh, the ski area operators got together and formed the North Carolina Ski Areas Association. And one of the uh, points that they wanted to continually mm -hmm monitor or keep track of was how does the ski industry impact um, the surrounding area, the state of North Carolina, um, the economies that they can reach. And so studies have been done uh, by the, our organization probably since the late early 80s. Every five to seven years, we conduct those studies. So we have a lot of data, a lot of history, and that's all on our, all of the studies are on our website, they're downloadable. Um, so it was the, the, the guys essentially long before me that that started this uh, measuring of the uh, the North Carolina ski area's economic impact on the regions of North Carolina. So as, as we got a chance to, to look at this year's report, uh, a, a few numbers stick out and, and I know we'll have a chance to talk through some of these, but you know, the, the high points here, uh, $190 uh, per person per day in terms of trip spending. Uh, that's about a $356 uh, per trip spend uh, per person, uh, $244 million of economic value to the snow sports industry. I mean, this is a big business. And I, I know that sometimes people will go up to the resorts and kind of get out of the visual of, of your traditional you know day in, day out uh, landscape here until they come back into the economy. And I think that's what this this report shows is it's not just behavior at the ski resort. It's all of the different uh, engagements that visitors will have with a community that ultimately um, brings this kind of impact to a region like ours, which, which is obviously incredibly important in our overall economic landscape. Anything stand out to you as, as surprising or reassuring as, as this new fresh set of numbers came out? Oh, sure, there's a couple of surprises, not surprising, but um, uh, different out outcomes that have, uh, that we see. Um, but typically, uh, we're seeing what we would like to see, which is growth in skier visits, growth in revenue, growth in um, net revenue, also growth in um, capital investment. Um, some of the things we're seeing, which are, are terrific, uh, a little bit surprising to the, to the rest of the nation as a whole in terms of the ski industry. The southern uh, region of, of skiing in the United States is seeing more diversity. Most of the regions in the country are really stagnant with diversity and introducing uh, a diverse group of people to snow sports. It's typically a, 
um, a sport for wealthier, whiter people. We're seeing in the South that we're, we're um, seeing affordable. We provide more affordable um, skiing and we're seeing more diversity, like I mentioned. Um, but again, we're seeing trends in skier visits going up, trends in economic impact going up in terms of dollars, dollars spent. And as you mentioned, um, $244 million in total economic value um, is, what, is what we're seeing, but $148 million of that is the direct spending in, in the, at the ski areas. So the, the difference between the 244 and the 148 is the induced or the indirect spending, and that's what funnels down beyond the ski areas through towns like Boone or Benner Elk or even down to the low country to Hickory and Lenore and uh, into um, the areas surrounding all of the ski areas, Cataloochee into Asheville, um, Sapphire and Hatley Point, also down in the western, southwestern part of the state. They're seeing um, indirect and uh, spending sort of trickling, trickling down beyond the ski areas. And that's what we like to see, obviously, an industry that makes a difference not only for themselves as a as a as a, a profitable company, but as a um, industry that supports the entire economy. And you know whether that be uh, through a tax base, through real estate sales, through grocery store purchases, um, gas purchases, daycare, healthcare. You know, it, it, ski, the ski industry truly touches the in, the entire economy of. The mountainous region and like i said trickles down to some of the lowlands and the foothills you know i'm, I'm glad that you brought up the uh, kind of the, the foundational element of how the business is run because another one of the things that came out in, in yesterday's uh, uh presentation was uh the number of full-time employees that have grown over time the the reliance on part-time seasonal staff as well uh, an incredibly important sector of our business community that that is needed to support again a, a quarter of a billion dollar industry um how have you seen the 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 growth of that workforce over time uh i, I would imagine it, it's gotten a little bit more specialized in in the way technology has kind of entered the industry but uh, what are the trends there in terms of hiring both on the the full and part-time side that that are helping you support uh, what it is that that sugar mountain and so many others are trying to do here in the region you know, um, employment uh, staffing really hasn't changed a whole lot. Growth in our um, employment base has grown. We, we need more employees. Um, we, we've expanded our offerings to tubing and ice skating and snowshoeing. Um, so, like I mentioned, it's just an expansion of what we need to operate and um, the amount of people that we put through here. Um, we've had to accommodate and grow our, our employment base to accommodate the, the increase in the skier visits and, and, and the guests who go to the other, uh, take advantage of the other activities. Yeah, I think it was interesting to see and, and not incredibly surprising, but uh, roughly 88% of the respondents uh, came out of the, the Southeast, either from North Carolina or, or uh, states such as Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee. That's not surprising based on the license plates we see in our community, especially at this time of year. I think the number that jumped out at me, though, was 51 percent of, of the skiers and, and snowboarders that were surveyed here came from the state of North Carolina. And then looking at a further breakdown of that, seeing where the Charlotte Metro, the Raleigh Metro, Greensboro and so on and so on show up in terms of of the routing of traffic to this area. How does mm -hmm. data like that help the ski area association? target messaging to either support the crowds that are coming from those areas or maybe see one one area like the the triad area example was was a little farther down the list um how do you use that to, to try to make sure that you're generating the traffic to, to come up here when you see a data set like that yeah sure clearly i mean and that that's been uh we've had those findings ever since we started this reporting um it may fluctuate a little bit you know uh, georgia may sort of come a little bit ahead of florida one year south carolina but obviously it helps us target who our customer is and who our customer isn't. And if we can reach further, we have seen, um, we work very closely with Visit NC and the uh, North Carolina Division of Travel and Tourism. Um, so we share that with them and we're able to see who's not coming. Um, and we've branched out a little bit to the Texas area, a little bit further west. And um, so we, we were, you know, you're just able to target exactly where you want to be and understand um, who's coming, where they're coming from, 
and where they're not, and most, I think more importantly, where they're not coming and if that's, those uh, markets are viable. And we do see that they are viable, those ones that we're not getting a lot of um, customers from because we're still uh, in a drive market. The areas just beyond, you know, Nashville, where you're seeing a little bit more West, we're not, we're not seeing a lot of uh, consumers coming from the West, a little bit more West. Can we market to them? Can we target them? And we see, sure we can, because it's not that long of a drive. But again, we like to get the message to those in Charlotte, to those down in Florida, um, specifically in Atlanta, uh, South Carolina, Georgia, um, the Triad, Wilmington, Raleigh. So it's very, very helpful. Clearly, it gives us a roadmap of what to do and what not to do and where to be and where not to be. You know, I think another one of the the data points that showed up in a couple of different areas, uh, and this can translate to all types of business. I think it's magnified in a situation like this one, but I, I do think that listeners and viewers of this podcast will find little ways that they may be able to take this nugget. And that all centers back around customer service. You look at, at 30% of visitors to North Carolina came for a first time or a beginner experience. That kind of lends you to believe that there is a nurturing way about uh, the, the teaching of the sport here that continues to bring people here to learn how to do that. But then the, my favorite stat, I think of the whole entire thing was that, that I think the, the second highest rated uh, service element was the friendliness of, of the lift operators. That's genuine customer service though. And that kind of gets back into that whole, the, the front people of your interaction, whether that's somebody working at a restaurant off the mountain or somebody working in a, a situation, uh, helping someone get on a chairlift is all part of a larger picture of hospitality for an area. And it seems like there were a number of areas in this report that suggest that the resorts here prioritize customer service. And that seems to be a lot of the recurring visits are based on that user experience. Yeah, we have to be very aware and very cognizant of <clears throat> how we treat our customers because um, in this part of uh, the ski industry in, in the Southeast, it, we get a lot of people who have never skied, who've never seen snow. So it's very important to give them a comfortable experience, a friendly experience, to teach them to be patient. And that's what I think all of the North Carolina skiers, um, when we see those kinds of results, we're very proud of that because we all do work hard and we, you know, train employees um, to be friendly, to be patient, um, to be informative. And that comes from the top down. And so if you have a, a good leader, good leadership, good management that understands what a skier needs, um, what a customer needs, how to be nice to a guest, um, that's easy for our our. Um, our employee base to follow and mimic that if if we have a strong management that that leads in a friendly and genuine and um, teaching to, a way in in order that teaches people and welcomes them and makes them feel comfortable, it, you know it's not so hard to to be friendly to those who know how to ski to the people who are in the industry who who love skiing who are very good at it. Um, it's more difficult to be friendly and be patient with those who have never done it. And we, we find that that's very important and we stress that and we're constantly encouraging the employees to behave that way. And, you know, people who work here, they like to work here. It's uh, an environment that's healthy. It's fun. You're outside in the fresh air. You've got people who are coming on vacation during the holiday period. So I think overall it's a very happy environment. So, you know, it, that lends to a, a very positive environment and, personality within all of the ski areas or skiing in general. Well, and it, and it plays into a strength of this area, that high country hospitality, often very welcoming when somebody comes in off of a day on the slopes to their favorite restaurant and they they find that opportunity to to kind of commiserate on the day or, or celebrate the day. There's somebody with a smile on their face that's meeting them in that that arena. And that just plays into the whole experience. And we see that story replicated time and again. And, and it's interesting to see that show up in data. Um, Kim, one of the things that, that also stood out was about 1.6, almost 1.7 million people over the last two years of data from 2021 through the end of last season have visited the area to engage in, in snow sports activity. Um, 
obviously a heightened year at, at nearly 850,000 visitors back in that 2021-22 year where international travel still wasn't uh, back to normal from the COVID perspective. And we had a lot more visitors up here that year anyway. I guess my question is based on higher volume in the last couple of years, how has technology met the industry to help resorts like Sugar Mountain and, and, uh, and others to be able to process people in a more efficient manner and, and make sure that the visitor experience uh, remains high at a time where interaction is something that everybody is really kind of taking stock of, uh, you know, from their own personal experience to how maybe a, a, a resort or, or uh, you know, somewhere where they're, they're visiting like that is, is handling them. Yeah, you know, we see that it's easy to see the uh, capital investments um, that we make on the mountain, you know, with snowmaking, with new lifts. Um, it's not always obvious the, the improvements and the money we spend sort of in the back door, which is, you know, software and processing people and programming and ticketing and um, all of those things that, that make uh, your, your experience a little bit smoother, a little bit quicker and a little bit faster. So, um, technology has certainly helped us to bring a more easy, a more seamless experience to the customer. We're still working on that. It's it's always um, a work in progress. There's always new technology. There's always new software, new strategies, new rental um, processing programs, more you know online ticketing, uh, online um, season pass sales. Um, we're always trying to take advantage of those. Um, new nuances. Um, they're expensive, you know, snow cats, uh, snow making, new lifts are all expensive, but it all plays into the, into the overall um, way of managing and um, make creating, you know, a, a good solid business where customers are happy and they get through lines and so forth. Again, not just the software is helpful, but also upgrading the lift system is critical too, because if you have slow lifts or not enough lifts, you're constantly standing in line. So with the new lifts, faster lifts, we're seeing um, shorter lift lines. We're seeing crowds spread out more all over the mountain instead of at the base of the mountain. So it's it's a it's a very uh, rounded um, uh, operation that that takes a lot of uh, working parts from the lifts to the to the cashiers to sales. Um, to, to moving people through the rental shop, it's all it all has to work together, and um, technology obviously is a huge part in that. So you you've got this uh, information, and, and again, if you're a, a chamber member uh, watching or viewing this uh, from a link in your chamber report email, you've got some fresh links right underneath uh, that that go to this report and and the data that's available there. If you're not, uh, visit goskinc.com. Great, um, uh, right there on the front page, uh, information on the economic report. You can actually go back and view some of the archives there as well. So you can kind of chart along the progress that we have seen uh, in this incredibly important industry. Uh, Kim, my last question for you is what what do the the um, resort staff, those that are that are in management at all of these different places throughout Western North Carolina, not just here at the high country, what do you do with this information? How do you all get together now and say, here's another year of data, how do we begin to plan on, on what the coordinated effort for the industry looks like moving forward? Yeah, you know, we, we, we like to share that with uh, GOSKI and, or, I mean, I'm sorry, with Visit NC, with the North Carolina Division of Travelers and Tourism, the DOT, all of all of the government entities that are affected by um, the economic impact that we bring um, to the high country and to the south um, western part of the state. Um, and we'll work together with those agencies to ensure that we're all working together, that they they understand, you know, the the type, the number of visitors that we bring in, um, and that affects um, roads and travel. Um, and then Visit NC, of course, is always trying to promote the state of North Carolina, and this kind of data helps them understand um, who's coming at what time of the year. And you know, we we didn't talk much about how uh, during the winter months, without skiing, it would be very slow. So. Um, in, in our mountainous areas. So Visit NC likes to understand where the visitors are coming from and when they're coming, you know, the amount of money they're spending. So as an organization, um, we, we partner with those agencies and talk with them 
and just have conversations so we're all on the same page and we're all um, working together to create a great experience and, and bring money into the communities in Western North Carolina. Well, it was great at, at the press conference event to see uh, town leadership from the various communities uh, as, as part of that conversation as well. So again, the support communities around the resorts can begin to anticipate, uh, you know, we all know when the big weeks are, you know, Christmas week, Martin Luther King holiday weekend, uh, you know, certainly on into President's Day. But but just understanding the dynamics of, you know, when it, when it snows a little bit in Charlotte and snows a lot up here, people tend to come running up on the weekend. So how can we as a community be ready to anticipate those needs? Uh, that all comes from, from data and conversations like this. So I, I appreciate uh, you all for continuing to loop in other community partners to, to help make the, the support mechanism for that uh, that much stronger. So with that said, I'll give you kind of a, an opportunity here to tell us a little bit about what's going on at, at Sugar Mountain as we get ready to get into one of those busy times. I know the snow guns have been going well and, uh, and, and hopefully uh, great conditions ahead for one of the busiest weeks of the year. Yeah, today we just started our holiday period and that's going to go through January 1st. So we're ready for um, all of our guests and customers to come on up and, and ski and have a good time. We've got some fun events going on. We've got our New Year's party that's uh, with a torchlight parade, fireworks and um, bands and stuff like that all, all throughout the, the New Year's week. Santa skis during, during the day here at Sugar. Sometimes he'll be on a snowboard. Uh, we've got bands uh, each Saturday and some some other weekdays throughout the holiday period. And, and then more most importantly, we've got some snow and some cold weather in the forecast as well. So that always makes um, the, uh, the snow goers and the people coming to the mountains happy and um, content with, with what we're able to offer them. So we're all ready and we're excited for a, a very busy and um, fun holiday period, cold and snowy too, we hope. Well, we certainly hope so. And we'll, we'll uh, do all we can. You know, the Chamber of Commerce weather uh, uh, pattern changes for the winter time. We actually like the per uh, precipitation rather than maybe in the summer. Chamber of Commerce days are blue skies and, and no rain. So we, we've yeah, officially flipped the switch here from that perspective, too. Uh, yeah, Kim, thanks for spending some time and, and talking through this. Again, we'll share this information with, with members and with community members so you can get an understanding of, of just how valuable our, our winter sports partners are to our overall economic picture. And again, a lot of those businesses that you like to frequent in January, February, March are all um, uh, buoyed by a great winter. And uh, and again, that is uh, certainly a change that's uh, gone on over decades here and one that our community is very ready to respond to. So uh, best of luck for you, uh, Kinder, in the holidays. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, David. I really appreciate it.